this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. It sounds like we're at a racetrack. I know many of you have heard that sound, whether you've been watching NASCAR on TV or just sitting on the side of the highway when a car comes racing by. That's called the Doppler effect. So what I've just described there in perfect cinematic sound is the Doppler effect. Let's try to piece together what we heard there. As the car moves towards us, we hear What is that? As the car moves towards us, we hear an increase in the pitch. What's another name for pitch? Frequency. So as a car moves towards us, here we are, with the Doppler effect. We have a car, standard race car here, a little exhaust pipe, a little antenna to catch radio waves. It's producing a sound wave, a sound wave, a wave. As that car moves towards us, we hear an increase in the pitch. Another name for that is an increase in frequency. Ah, if the frequency is increasing, increasing frequency corresponds to decreasing wavelength. So if we're hearing an increase in the frequency, it must be because the wavelength is getting shorter. So sure enough, as an object is moving towards us, its wavelength is decreasing. To use terms that we've used before. Now you're saying, wait a minute, that's to describe light. This is sound. Hey, they both travel as a wave. So as an object moves towards us, we hear the wavelength. We hear it in the form of the pitch, the wavelength actually decrease. Why? Because the waves are literally getting compressed as the car moves towards us. The waves are getting compressed, physically compressed. That's why we hear the difference in pitch, the Doppler effect. As the car moves by, not only does the volume decrease, but we hear a decrease in the pitch. So as the car moves by, the pitch decreases. Therefore, the frequency must be decreasing. What does that have to do with wavelength? Well, the frequency is going down. Wavelength must be going up. So the wavelength goes up. What's going on here? That's because as the car races away, the sound waves are stretching out, making for longer wavelengths. Ah. There's a connection between speed towards and away from us and wavelength. Now this works for cars moving towards us that we hear. It also works for stars and other objects in the universe moving towards or away from us. As an object moves towards us, the wavelength gets compressed, and as an object moves away from us, the wavelength gets stretched. That's called the Doppler effect. So we can tell by how much movement we've got what's going on. So for example, imagine a yellow star. As the star moves away from us, its wavelength gets stretched out into longer and longer wavelengths. We call that a redshift. Moving towards longer wavelengths is called a redshift. It's stretching out. By measuring how much redshift we see on that star, we can tell how fast it's moving. Now you can say, look, what about a blue star that's moving away from us? It would look yellow. That's still considered a redshift. A red star that's cooler than our sun moving away from us could move into the infrared. It's still a redshift. If it's moving away, it is redshifted. And you guessed it, as it moves towards us, that's called a blue shift. So it moves away, it's considered to be a redshift. And how much it moves determines the redshift. How much it moves determines how fast it's moving. 
And by the same token, as something moves towards us and it gets compressed, as it moves towards us, the yellow star would start to appear bluer. That's considered to be a blue shift. Even if a star moves from yellow to blue, great, blue shift. But a blue to ultraviolet, that's a blue shift. Ultraviolet to x-ray, that's a blue shift. Anytime you move towards shorter wavelengths, it's considered a blue shift. So, we can tell a star's temperature by its color. Its spectroscopy tells us its composition. And by measuring the amount of shift in the peak wavelength of the star, we can tell whether it's moving towards or away from us and how fast. We put all that stuff together in our astronomer's toolbox and we can find a lot of information about stars and galaxies for that matter by studying light. What we'll talk about as we move forward in astronomy is once astronomers got this figured out, they started to use the measurement of Doppler shift to study the motion not just of stars but of galaxies. Galaxies are huge amalgamations of stars. We'll talk about them shortly. And what we found is that almost every other galaxy we looked at was redshifted, meaning it's moving away from us. If almost every galaxy is moving away from us, that must mean that the universe is doing what? Expanding. And that brings us to the early 20th century with the radical idea that in fact the universe began in some titanic rapid expansion known as the Big Bang. And that expansion continues today. It manifests itself as the redshift.